The topic of decompositions in graphs is an incredibly well studied area and it's a very broad topic but let's just get the basics here in this video. So basically what you do is if you're looking for a decomposition in a graph what you really want to do is think a bit about it as taking a graph and decomposing it into smaller graphs. So let's take a look at this example. This is a very simple graph right here. I've basically constructed it so that the uh, example is very, very easy. What I can do is I can take a look at this graph G and I can say, well, I can certainly find a three cycle in this graph. For example, here's one highlighted in pink. And I can find another three cycle in this graph over here highlighted in green. So I can think of taking this graph G and decomposing it, decompose into three cycles and they are this three cycle as well as this three cycle. So the point here is that the edges of my three cycles don't overlap. So right here I have edge disjoint subgraphs of my graph G. The fact that they're edge disjoint means that when I take my graph G I'm just decomposing the edges of the graph into this family of graphs. In this case the family of graphs happen to be three cycles. So in general what a decomposition is is breaking down a graph into a family of edge disjoint subgraphs and they don't have to be three cycles, they don't even have to be cycles, and they don't have to be the same. This just happened to be an example where they were the same but if you take a look at maybe this one, if I have a three cycle like this and a four cycle like this, if I break this graph into a three cycle and a four cycle, it's still a decomposition into two cycles, it's just not necessarily the same cycle. So that's also a possibility. So in general, a decomposition, decomposition of a graph G, of a graph G is a family, and I'm going to denote the family by some sort of like curly F. A family F of edge disjoint subgraphs. Of course, they should be subgraphs of the original graph G, such that. Now this next piece is just saying that all of the edges of the original graph get used up. So if you look at this family of edge disjoint subgraphs, you can actually label all of the edges and say, well, this edge got covered right here, and this edge got covered right here, and this edge got covered right here. And similarly, you can see that all of the edges of G get used up, and used up only once because they're edge disjoint over here. So this is what that says, the union of all of the graphs in the family. So just think about what this means. This means that if you were to take every graph within this family of, disjoint, of edge disjoint subgraphs, so in this example it would be take this graph as F and then take this graph as F. Take the union of all of those and you look at their edge sets if you union up all of those edge sets, you will get the edge set of the original graph. So all it's saying is that you're breaking up the edges of the original graph into edges of these um, edge disjoint subgraphs, exactly like we did up here. So in this particular example, we know that the uh, edge set of, I'm going to call this one F1, and this one F2. So my family in this particular case is equal to F1 and then F2. So this union here really means take the edge set of F1 
union the edge set of F2 and make sure that you get the edge set of the graph, which indeed it does, because the edge set of the graph simply is formed by these two cycles on three edges. Okay, so that's what this is saying here, and that defines a decomposition. So now let's take a look at some more complicated examples. The types of examples that I'm interested in right now is decomposing into families of graphs. Now these, this family could be composed of any types of graphs, it doesn't matter which type in general for a decomposition, but if every graph in the family is a cycle, then we call it a cycle decomposition. So let's write that down. If So let's write that down. If every graph of the family of decomposition graphs F is a cycle, then the decomposition is called a cycle decomposition. And similarly, if every graph in the family is a path, then the decomposition is called a path decomposition. So for example, if every graph of the family F is in fact a path, then it would be called a path decomposition. So that's fairly intuitive. And actually, you should notice right away that a path could be as simple as something that looks like this, which is just an edge. And every graph can be decomposed into its edges. So there's always going to be a trivial path decomposition. So let's just be really clear about this, and I'll just draw an example graph. Let's say this is our graph G, um, like this, and like this. So if you take a look at this, hopefully you can convince yourself quite easily that there is no cycle decomposition of this graph, because if you were to attempt to do such a thing, you might take this to be one of the cycles, so that's one member of the family, but what are you going to do with the rest? There's no cycles that are going to be decomposing this graph. However, if you wanted to find a path decomposition, there is simply a trivial one, and that is to take this edge as one of the families, as one of the members of, in the family, and then this edge, and then this edge, and then this edge. So right now I have four different subgraphs right here, and then I have another subgraph over here, and another subgraph over here, and let's conclude with, I'll just use yellow for the last one, and another subgraph over here. So all of these edges is in fact a subgraph and it's a trivial path, it's just on one edge. So there's always going to be a trivial path decomposition. There is a trivial path decomposition for every graph. I should say every simple graph. Okay, so that should be fairly self-explanatory that if you have a graph you can just break it up into its um, individual edges and each of those edges is in fact a trivial path. But that's not so interesting these trivial path decompositions, we're probably more interested in what we can do with slightly more complicated things like decomposing into cycles. And in fact we just saw an example right here where we can easily tell that there is no cycle decomposition. No cycle decomposition. But I want to give another example where we could have a cycle decomposition and give a slightly larger example than the one we saw at the beginning of the video. Let's take a look at an example graph that I've prepared earlier. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at this graph as our graph G and we're going to attempt to break it up into cycles. 
So there's actually more than one way of doing this, but what I would like to do is to go ahead and start to find some of the smaller cycles like this. There's a pink cycle. like this. So that will be one of the graphs and then maybe I take this piece to be the blue cycle here. So that's another member of the family. So right now I should actually just write this down. I have um, a cycle on three vertices and then I have a cycle on five vertices. And now I'm going to go through here and find a cycle one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, a cycle on nine vertices, and finally another cycle on three vertices. And you could have done this in different ways where you would have then had different cycle lengths, that would have also worked out. But this is an example of a cycle decomposition. So what you would do is you would say that this set of graphs, this family of graphs, is my cycle decomposition. So they have lengths 3, 3, 5, and 9. And of course you could go through this and do um, a different way and find different cycle lengths, but the point is that if you were to take the union, so the union of every graph in the family, and you take the union of their edge sets, you will get back the edge set of the entire graph. And you can just simply see that by the way we've done this. If you look at the first graph here, being the first value for f, and you take its edges, and then you take the union of that with the next edges, these are the blue edges, and then the green edges, and then the red edges, you'll find all of the edges of the original graph. So this is in fact a cycle decomposition. In the next video, what we'll do is take a look at a theorem that characterizes exactly the graphs that have cycle decompositions.